In this video, we are going to be talking about childhood behavioral disorders. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel if these videos are helpful and if you guys like them. Now, let's talk about childhood behavioral disorders. These are a set of behavioral disorders that usually have an early onset. In uh, step questions, you're going to see vignettes where the child is presenting early on in preschool or elementary school. So it's pretty early onset. And there's three main sets of childhood behavioral disorders that you should be aware of. Uh, there's a fourth one that's not really childhood, but we're going to talk about that in a second. Uh, but make sure you understand these three behavioral disorders pretty well. The first one is conduct disorder. The second one is oppositional defiant disorder. And the third one is disruptive mood dysregulation disorder, or DMDD for short. Now, the treatment for all of these is going to be cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT. You can give drugs. That's always an option. But the first line treatment and uh, when it comes to, you know, step one, the first treatment is going to be CBT, always. Let's talk about conduct disorder. Conduct disorder is a childhood behavioral disorder in which a, uh, a patient is going to present with repetitive and pervasive behavior that violates, and this is the key word, violates the basic rights of others, okay, and societal norms. So for example, this could be a very aggressive kid who, you know, bullies other kids. This could be a kid who likes to hurt animals, which is, again, not normal because it's violating societal norms. Um, this could also just be a very uh, argumentative and lying kid who likes to steal as well. So like we said, it, this patient could present with aggression to people and animal. Uh, in the case, you may see a kid who likes to destroy property and they might be into arson and lighting things on fire. That's a sort of conduct disorder, you know, really, really big red flag that should point you towards conduct disorder. So let's just write this down. Arson. Okay, that's definitely one of them. And then they could also be stealing things. They could also, you know, be involved in theft. And that makes sense because these kids don't really understand that they are violating the rights of others. They're stealing because they think they can. And, you know, if they can, why don't they? Why shouldn't they? After the age of 18, conduct disorder is reclassified as antisocial personality disorder. And that's what I meant by the fourth disorder that's kind of related to childhood behavioral disorders. Um, if the child is under 18 years old, they are by default conduct disorder, okay? So this is going to be a less than 18-year-old kid. If it's uh, if the kid is greater than or equal to 18 years old, so if they're an adult, they're classified at by antisocial personality disorder, okay? That's the key giveaway. And usually patients who have antisocial personality disorder also had signs and symptoms of conduct disorder when they were a child. Uh, I'm sure you guys have heard that a lot of killers and people who are in jail were aggressive for violent crimes. Um, in their history, uh, people noticed that they were torturing animals or they were hurting other kids. That's because they suffer from conduct disorder. So just keep in mind, conduct disorder eventually can progress to antisocial personality disorder. And the key giveaway for a person with a uh, antisocial personality disorder is they're probably coming out of you know a jail sentence um, for an aggressive behavior or for grand larceny or grand theft or grand arsony, stuff like that. Now, the treatment for this is going to be CBT, just like we discussed. And I put this little gift right here to make you think of a young, aggressive, angry kid who likes to hurt things. Okay, and you can see this little hurt guy right there. Anyways, let's talk about the next childhood behavioral disorder, and that's oppositional defiant disorder, ODD. In this case of childhood behavioral disorder, you're going to have an enduring pattern of hostility, defiant behavior towards authority figures in the absence of of serious violations, okay? Um, the main hallmark of ODD is going to be defiance, okay? They're going to be defiant to authority figures. And these authority figures right here could be parents, right? Because parents are always authority figures. They could be teachers, okay? Or it could also be, you know, people from their church or religious organization, etc. Stuff like that. They're very defiant to authority figures. Um, a child might argue with the authority figure. They may be defiant and vindictive towards their parents and teachers just to get back at them. But 
whereas in uh, conduct disorder, they usually violate people's rights, you know, and social norms. In opposition defiant disorder, there is no serious violations. They're just arguing. They're just going against the will. They're not trying to hurt anyone. They're not trying to steal. They're not trying to get under, you know, um, the authority figure's skin and just rattle them up. This occurs in at least, this should occur in at least one individual who is not a sibling. So the defiance that they have should not be towards a sibling. It should be towards someone else because you want to, you know, isolate any other instances uh, that could be causing this defiance. If a kid is just arguing with the parent because of something's happening with, you know, a sibling, that could just be an argument. So you want to take away every other external factor and simply um, isolate the cause being intrinsic in and of itself so you can classify as oppositional defiant disorder and it should not be caused by substance abuse depression or bipolar disorder right keep in mind in bipolar disorder they may be arguing from time to time they may have mania and hypomanics have hypomanic states and that could also be causing this sort of uh, aggressive not aggressive but argumentative state with the authority figure especially when uh, it's a patient who has bipolar who's a kid now this must last for at least six months in psychiatry there are a few uh you know a lot of cases or a lot of uh diagnostic criteria which class are you know classified under a minimum of six months of you know active symptoms and odd is definitely something that you have to have symptoms for at least six months and the treatment for this is going to be cognitive behavioral therapy like everything else and I got this little tiny kid right here who you know, just seems like he's aggressive or she's aggressive. She's just defiant authority figure. Next, and finally, we have disruptive mood dysregulation disorder or DMDD. Now, this is a controversial disorder because it has similarities to oppositional defiant disorder. In this uh, disorder, a child is going to have severe and recurrent temper outbursts that are out of proportion to a situation. And that's the key giveaway. If they start screaming and yelling when you tell them, no, you can't have ice cream and they throw a crazy temper tantrum, uh, you're probably looking at a kid who has uh, DMDD instead of ODD. They're not arguing with you simply because you're the authority figure. They're just going crazy over something that doesn't really make sense to you. That should clue you off to DMDD. This child may be constantly angry and irritable between outbursts, and uh, they may have few frequent temper outbursts as well. At least three a week in at least two settings, home and the school. This is, again, really important because you want to isolate the cause. You want to make sure this is not happening from an extrinsic cause, like such as, you know, maybe at home they're struggling or they're having an argument with their ki their parents or they're, you know, just having a bad week or you know, a few weeks. You want to make sure that it's something, iso it's not something extrinsic that's happening. You want to isolate it to be in an intrinsic uh, cause of these recurrent temper outbursts. Um, so you can classify it as DMDD. The treatment for this um, is going to be pretty much either stimulants, antipsychotics, but the mainstay, the first line treatment is going to be CBT, like we talked about, cognitive behavioral therapy. This is one of the disorders where you can give drugs um, early on, but you want to first start off with behavioral therapy. If that doesn't work on, then you can move forward with the drugs. And with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it was informative. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. We're going to be posting these videos regularly, so you know, just keep up with them. And I'll talk to you guys back here real soon. Go ahead and continue on to the next video.